Hello there, we're looking at February, March 2023, paper 1, 2. I'm a bit late, the exams are tomorrow for May, June 2023 students. And uh, I couldn't really do anything about it because the, the paper wasn't available before, before uh, until today actually. So uh, as soon as I could, I'm, I'm here recording the video. Now, you still have some time until the exams. Make sure you spread the word. Let your friends know if they were looking for it, if they've been looking for it. Let everybody know the video is out and, and, and everybody has a chance to review February, March 2023 paper. It's not too late. There's still time. But just make sure you spread the word, okay? Uh, you have to. You got to spread the word. Uh, what is the purpose of accounting? To enter each business transaction twice in books of account. Is that statement true? That is true. But is that the purpose of accounting? No, it's not. To prepare financial statements and provide information for decision making. Looks good. Okay, looks good. To prove that the total of the debit entries are equal, is that part of accounting? Yes, it is, but it's not the purpose, right? It's not the purpose, it's part of it. To provide financial financial information for the business man again, part of accounting, but not the purpose, okay? It's not the main purpose. This looks like the main purpose. At the end of the day, we're, we're going to make financial statements and provide decision-making uh, uh, information. So that's what we're looking at, okay? Option B. This is slightly tricky because the other options are true. They're not false. They're not the purpose of accounting, okay? How would a business owner know that he is receiving a return on his investment? So when you invest into some business, what are you looking at here? You're looking at profits, isn't it? You're looking at what kind of profits are being made. His bank account is no longer overdrawn. Is that indication of profit or a liquidity? Remember cash? Do you see anything wrong with that? Of course, cash is not equal to profit. Okay, so if his bank account improves, doesn't mean he's making good return. What if he just took a loan, right? What if he just took a loan? So that's definitely not an answer. His drawings have increased. Again, if he's drawing more, doesn't mean he's making more profit. No, his income statement shows a profit. It looks good to me. Let's see if there's a better option available. His working capital has increased during the year. Again, it's all indication of liquidity, guys. This is liquidity. This is your correct answer, return on investment. We look at profitability. What are the what is the correct order of processing accounting data using double entry system? Um, okay, just a process of accounting. It begins with what? What do you think? Business documents, isn't it? And then things go into journals, from their ledgers, and then from their trial balance. It looks like a good option to me, without any doubt. Um, and by the way, if you look at the other options, you don't start with journals. If there is business documents in, within these four, uh, you know, options. Business documents has to be the first step, and it is, logically speaking, what do you think? You first issue invoices when you go deal with someone. You you first, you know, receive an invoice if you bought something on credit. Anyway, it's, it's very logical. Business documents is the first step, and then things go into journals and ledgers and so on. Uh, so these are, of course, wrong. Let's move on. Number four, Ada bought goods on credit from Zuri. All right. Later, she returned some of the goods to Zuri. How did other record this? Now, always clarify the relationship. What is their relationship? Who's who? Other bought goods, the purchaser. Or let's just say, to make it better, let's make it better. You can say customer, okay? And the seller. Takes a second, but it's worth it. You're not going to make a silly mistake. How did other record this? Now, as a customer, she is returning, isn't it? She returned some goods to Zuri as a customer. So that's purchase return. Two options are eliminated, okay? If you know the basics of accounts, you should know that purchase returns are credited when, when incurred. And Zuri will be debited. Another way to think is Zuri is a payable. Payable falls. It's debited, okay? Let's move on. Four, four questions done. Uh, number five. Samir owns a shop to determine his selling price. He marks up inventory by 50%. Marks up means whatever the cost is, he adds 50% on top of that, and then he sells it. He took inventory for his own use, costing $100, but did not pay for it. Okay, well, he shouldn't really pay for his own inventory. He can just do an accounting adjustment, which is as follows. It's obviously a drawing. It's not a sale. Get rid of that. It's a drawing. Drawing of how much? Should we add the markup or should we put it without the markup now it's the owner taking away goods we're going to take it at cost isn't it we're going to reduce normally when you purchase goods 
you do purchases debit but now if the owner is taking away goods you credit purchases to reduce the amount of purchases you did and you always debit drawings when the drawing is taken drawing account is always debited if, if it's cash drawing drawings debit cash credit and so on let's move on uh number six in april mina sent ralph invoices of this 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 and a credit note of 63 credit note means there's a return okay uh let's confirm who's who remember the rule who's who mina sent invoices it's always the seller that invoiced invoice the customers like sellers give invoices to the customer ralph must be the customer relationship clear good let's move on in the same month ralph sent mina a debit note of 70. so if this is a calculation question that's not part of our calculation why debit note means nothing okay it's just a uh, request for refund we can say it's not a confirmed refund okay got that there's another way to think of it but just just go through you should know this all right at this stage if you don't know guys credit note is what's considered as a proper return this is just a that's a request for a return it's a request okay it's not a confirmed return and a check of 107 that should be considered okay there was there was no opening balance on mina's account at the at the start of april remember mina's a seller what was the balance on mina's account in ralph's book in customer's book we're looking at customer's perspective so in ralph's book mina is a payable as ralph is buying goods from mina his liability is going to increase and as he returns goods or let's say pays for them the liability will fall so 170 plus 240 plus 125 is going to increase the liability ralph has to give this money to to mina okay that's payable and then credit note not the debit note of uh, 63 is returned so he's not going to pay that anymore plus he also paid the 107 so he's not going to pay that anymore let's have a look right 170 plus 240 plus 125 minus 63 minus 107 gives us 365 and now again that's why you see you need to clarify the relationship we're looking at ralph's book the customer's book the supplier has to be credit why it's a payable okay customer pays supplier a payable account is always credit account okay so move on. in rare cases your your supplier may have a debit balance in that in that that's the case where you've overpaid or let's say uh, you've paid in advance there are cases you must have read this in your uh, control accounts chapter okay that's not relevant in this case let's just move on with it okay uh, number seven on first may bashir purchases goods on credit with a list price of 200 he is given a trade discount of 20. if the payment is made within 28 days cash discount of 10 will be given there's a condition that's why it's a cash discount there's a condition if he pays within a certain time then he will receive that discount okay Bashir the one who's purchasing which amount is credited to suppliers account the point is so what's the purchase value remember the purchase value has to be after the trade discount so when the book says when your book says trade discount is not recorded by that they mean that we 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 don't take the list price as a purchase cost we take it net of the trade discount we always remove the trade discount and then we say okay that's our purchase okay while the cash discount is dependent on the payment this is at the time of purchase so while purchasing it uh, on first may bashir would take away the 20 it's going to be left with 180 that's his actual purchase okay get get it move on let's move on the uh, the following errors were found after a trial balance had been completed okay which statement is correct about the trial balance that had been uh, completed let's have a look these are the errors that were found the um, the total of uh, sales account was overstated by 25. now sales account where does that normally go credit normally it's overstated by 25. it means your credit side will be higher by 25. and the total of wages which goes on the debit side is also higher by 25. so both the sides credit side higher by 25 debit side higher by 25. so which statement about the trial balance good the debit column is 25 25 dollars more than the credit no there's no more or less they're equally high okay none of these make sense if you read you read through them there's nothing to do with 50 over there the total of debit column and the total of credit column were equal they were wrong but they were equal what do we call this error give yourself a second think about that what what kind of error is this they're not connected clearly they're not connected it's not like we made one error so otherwise no 
these are two separate errors, two independent errors. We call that who knows who's 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 done their accounting uh, errors from the trial balance chapter. There were six of them. It's called compensating. Okay, compensating. Compensating errors means one error. Uh, the effect of one error cancels out effect of another. Although they're not related, but two unrelated errors cancel each other out. Trial balance will balance, but there is a still a mistake. There is a mistake, but it balances. Let's keep moving. I think I've spent too much time on this one. The following trial balance failed to balance. Okay, why? Which items have been wrongly uh, or entered onto the wrong side? Okay. Uh, first time I'm seeing such a huge MCQ question, isn't it? I think I'm not the only one wondering that. Anyway, anyway, looks easy though. Premise says, remember guys, what goes on the debit side? Assets. Expenses. What else? can say drawings if you want okay purchases and sales returns although those are not really category of their own mainly it's just assets and expenses just remember that what goes on the credit side liabilities and uh, income or even even you know sales it's, it's kind of an income revenue goes on the credit side and purchase returns and capital Right? Because it's kind of a liability. Remember, capital is a kind of a liability. So these are the two main ones which you should know. The rest are just logical. All right? Well, I may write pur purchases and uh, sales return as well. And that's sales and uh, purchase return. Now, at this point, I hope you all know this. Okay? So, premises at cost, their assets should be debited. That's good. Failing as cost, all good. Provision of depreciation, credit, all good. Bank loan, wrong. Liabilities, you see, where do they go on the credit side? Purchases, they are supposed to go on the debit, it's all good. Uh, sales on the credit, all good. Expenses, wrong, should go on the debit side. Expenses are debit balances. Trade receivables, looking good. Trade payables, looking bad. Wages, looking good. Bank looking bad. Overdraft, a liability. Cash in hand, looking good. Opening entry, opening entry. Opening inventory, why would they uh, put it in there? Oh, never mind. Yeah, of course. That's fine. But it goes on the debit side, of course. Uh, capital is looking good, right? So, uh, what are the problems there? Bank loan. Bank loan. This one doesn't even have bank loan. This one doesn't even have bank loan. So, it's one of these. And premises at cost is actually at the right place. There we go. You know what? Just by canceling, we didn't have to go that deep, actually, guys. Think about it. You just look at the options and you're good. So if you look at the premises at cost, that's at the right place. So this is clearly a wrong option. And both of these don't even contain the bank loan. You could have saved your, 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 some of your time. So even if you're not fully sure of all of them, you can still get this right. Never give up, right? You look at this and you don't know where that goes or where something else goes. Just look at the options. I didn't even have to look at all the options. I just had to look at the first few and then you get the point, right? Uh, we're done with number nine. Let's move on. Number 10. Mona paid uh, 32000 for a new motor vehicle. This includes $100 for fuel and two fifty for road tax. She debited the purchases account. Look, guys, when you purchase non-current assets, you don't debit purchases. You only debit purchases when you buy something for day-to-day -day trading. Okay? Is Mona in the motor vehicle business? Doesn't seem like that. Otherwise, they would have clarified. And credited the bank account with 32000 So that's fine. No problem. That's wrong. So why did you debit purchases? You were supposed to debit your motor vehicle and not even buy that full amount because, you know, fuel and and road tax that would just be your revenue expenditure okay so 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 what are you going to do cancel this credit your purchase account why did you debit no need credit your purchase account so this option has it this one doesn't uh, this one doesn't so it's one of these two secondly in this case the whole 32,000 is debited to motor vehicle which is wrong so guys look by canceling you save yourself a lot of time you do like look at this come on cancel the wrong options and you have the right one even if you don't know how to treat these you should clearly know that this is not capitalized you don't treat this as a motor vehicle cost it's motor vehicle expenses it's all good guys let's move on number 11 
Uh, Shazia's trial balance failed to agree and difference was placed in a suspense account, okay? Shazia discovered the following errors. Now remember, when you make a trial balance and this size is, let's say, 100, 100 and that's 150, you know where the suspense account ends up? Over there. The 50 goes over there. So the smaller side. The smaller side is your suspense account side. Fine. Let's move on. What was the balance on suspense account before the errors were corrected? All right. Look, after the errors are corrected, suspense account is supposed to have no balance. But before the errors were corrected, so let's have a look at the effect these error must have had on the trial balance. Let's have a look. A, a check received 280 had been credited to the bank account. Now think about it. You received a check. You were supposed to debit supposed to be on the debit side but rather than debiting look just by not listen to me carefully by not doing that you have increased your credit side by 280 just by the, the fact that you didn't put it on top of that you've actually gone the wrong way and you have even one step ahead you could you you, you have credited this instead so think about that okay guys you, you didn't debit it which, which you were supposed to, just by the fact that you didn't debit the amount, your credit side now is bigger by 280. And, or, or you can say your debit side is smaller. It's the same thing. On top of that, you have credited it instead. So overall effect, you have increased your credit side by 280. Your credit side is higher by 280 already. Okay? So look at the next one. A check from Nunu. Nunu, really? Like how do they come up with these names? unreal isn't it like sometimes they take it too far nunu that can't be a real name please if some if a nunu is watching this video i'm sorry i don't mean any offense but that's an odd name okay it's hard to keep a straight face in your accounting exams okay man i wouldn't be able to uh it's not that funny but still come on nunu what kind of name is that anyway let's move on again apologies to any nunu's watching this video okay the a check to so hard a uh, check to Nunu, $50, had not been entered in Nunu's account. Apparently, Nunu is our payable. Okay, Nunu the payable. We paid him, but we didn't reduce the payables. As a result, what's going to happen? As a result, our payables will be higher. They were supposed to be lower. It means our credit side, which is our payables, are higher by 50. They were supposed to be lower, but in this case, because we made the mistake, they're higher by 50. So all the effects are on the credit side. Our credit side in total is higher by have a look 280 plus 280 plus 50 that's 610 610 okay oh uh, 610 there's only one option let's move on number 12 on 31st July the bank column in Jay's cash book showed he had 312 in the bank on the same date, his bank statement showed, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I explain you why that was debit? Although the amount is fine, we can move on. Why is that debit? 610. Look, if the credit side is bigger, imagine there's a trial balance and we have like, you know, uh, 1,610 over here and we just have 1,000 here. See, this side is greater by 610. What's going to happen? Suspense account goes there by 610. That's an example. See, that's why, debit. Let's move on, let's move on, let's move on. So on 31st July, the bank column in Jay's cash book showed he had 312 in the bank. On the same date, his bank statement showed a debit balance. Remember, bank statement shows a debit balance, it's a negative balance, okay? According to cash book, we have a positive 312. Wait a minute. 312, according to our cash book, according to our bank statement, we, are, we, we have negative 53, okay? The cash book says we have 3 and 12 in the bank and the bank statement says we are in the negative 53. Guys, debit bank statement is a negative balance, okay? It was found that bank charges 47 had not been recorded in the cash book, so we remove it from the cash book 47. And a check 318 from a customer had not been credited by the bank. When they say credited by the bank, it means it's, it hasn't been added. It's not, it's not yet added by the bank, okay? They're supposed to match now. Let's have a look supposed to match okay 312 minus 47 265 well i i think i know what the answer is and you should know what the answer is but let's just confirm let's reconcile 
make sure in your calculations you put negative 53. If you put positive 53, you'll keep scratching your head. Plus 318. Three, 265. 265. There we go. An asset. Okay. The good thing is they're at least not testing you with that being asset or liability. You get the number, you get the answer. All right, let's move on. And by the way, it's a positive answer in both cases. So that's why signs are important. If you put positive 53 and then add 318, you're going to lose out. Okay. Uh, probably it's one of the options. Let's have a test. Let's see how tricky the examiners are. 318 plus 53. There we go. You see, it's 371. There we go. 371. So they tricked you with that. But anyway, um, we know the answer. We move on. Okay. Why is a sales ledger control account prepared? To enable the income statement to be prepared quickly. It helps. Does it? Um, maybe very indirectly. If you're talking about, let's say, calculating the provisions, provision for doubtful this. Well, but that's so indirect. It's not the purpose of preparing sales ledger control account. Maybe true, but not not that linked. Uh, to ensure that all ledgers are accurate, can you make something accurate? No. You can uh, reduce. You can find errors with it, but just by making SLC, you don't find you, you don't you don't make sure ledgers are accurate just by and all ledgers it says. So no 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 no. That's definitely wrong. It looks it focuses on sales and purchase ledger. There we go. Found the flaw with it. To provide a summary of, uh, by the way, whenever they use uh, these extreme words like all, be a little skeptic, okay? Accurate. There's a trick involved. Because a lot of times, you know, they, they're not so certain that something's going to be true, okay? Uh, to provide a summary of transaction with uh, credit customers, uh, that's 100% uh, possible. To show the amount due from each trade receivable from each, no, it looks at the total. There we go. And by the way, looking at SLCA, so all ledgers, no, no, no. It only checks the accuracy of uh, sales ledger. Okay, let's move on. Easy easy cancellation there. We get the right answer by canceling the wrong ones. Jason provided the following information. What was the debit balance on the sales ledger control account on 31st March? We can just do over uh, additions and subtractions. So at the beginning, we have a debit balance, a positive balance. When you make sales on credit, you're going to receive this money in the future. In anything that affects your trade receivables, guys, we're looking at total trade receivables. That's your total trade receivables account. So anything that affects your receivables, positive, negative, just, just you know, integrate the effect. So positive 400 at the beginning, add 520. And then when you receive money, it's not going to be receivable anymore. No more, right? So remove it. If it's written off as a bad debt, again, no more. You're not going to receive this in the future. Check received from customer, dishonored. Now, previously, you thought the money is received, but turns out money is not received. And so you're, you're going to receive this in the future. So anything you receive in the future increases, you add it. Anything you won't be receiving in the future anymore, you deduct it, you remove it. Okay, let's do the, let's do the calculation. 400 plus 520 minus 300 minus 45 minus 10. 585. Looking good. Okay, now don't do a little stupid mistake. I might do it. I don't know. Maybe just go for that, right? It's just 285. Be careful, not 265. It's it's very common that you make this silly, stupid mistake where you don't you didn't have to, but you just make a mistake because you don't you didn't focus on 65 and 85. So be careful. It's 65 in this case. Uh, oh, <laughs> look, there we go. 85 in this case, not 65. Let's move on. Just saying, right? Because I was almost going to do that and move on. Don't do that in exam. You're you're panicking in the exam, I know. Uh, and and you know you don't want to make any mistakes. And just ju just the fact that you're panicking and you don't want to make mistakes, you will end up making more. Uh, just be, stay calm, okay? Overall, stay calm in the exam. The following payments were made when a new machine was purchased. How much was capital expenditure? Okay, capital expenditure, revenue expenditure. It's a very common topic, test commonly tested topic in MCQs. Cost of machine is capitalized for sure. Charge of delivering, look, cost of the non-current asset, any cost of delivering that asset, and any installation cost, any site preparation cost. You're buying an asset, and you need to prepare the site where it goes. That also, that also is capitalized. Uh, so charging the delivery charge. Insurance, no, that's a maintenance cost. Okay, That's a yearly, monthly expense, no. Uh, wages of employees installing the machine. Installing the machine, guys, is installation cost added, okay? Add it up, all of them. 3,200, 32,000. I mean, 
1800 plus 1300 that's 35100 35100 okay right number 15 done just need to confirm i got a message it may be important it's not important okay uh, why should a manufacturer charge charge depreciation on her factory equipment to calculate the residual value of the equipment is that the purpose no it's not it's part of calculation if you're using a straight line to provide the replacement of equipment it's always it's a very common remember guys you don't depreciate to replace you don't depreciate to uh, to make a fund for replacement it's a common distractor it's a common distractor in your mcqs forget it to spread the cash flow we're not talking about cash flow cash flows out in the first year when you buy it cash goes away but the use of it or the we just spread the cost not the cash flow guys cash is the physical money you may pay that in the first year but depreciation is charged throughout the life okay so the goal is to spread the cost not the actual cash flow all right let's move on okay number 17. a manufacturer provided the following information machinery at cost and provision for depreciation and lose to that valuation let's move on Machinery is depreciated 20% per annum using a reducing balance method. Important to note, uh, additional loose tools were purchased for 300. Fine. No depreciation is provided. Very important on the loose tools purchased during there. So on these, there is no 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 depreciation. This was not depreciated. And at the end of the year, uh, the loose tools more than 12 months old were valued at 1850. Do you get that? So these are now valued at 1850. These are unchanged. What, are, what is the question? What was the depreciation charge? Okay, let's have a look. This, not depreciated, forget it, because we're only focusing on depreciation charge. 2100, not 21,000, let's get rid of that. 2100 minus 1850. 250. That's the depreciation on the uh, loose tools. What about the depreciation on uh, the machinery at cost? You will do 20,000 minus 7,200 and the answer times 20%. Okay, so that's 2560. To clarify, 20,000 minus 7,200. All of that, whatever the answer is, times 20%. Let's move on. Okay, it's going to be 2560. You may use a pencil for your workings, okay, in the exam. I don't know about the pen. Maybe you can use it, but I suggest use a pencil so it doesn't go messy. But the final answer with a pen, isn't it? That's what it says in the front. Let me just confirm. Oh, wait, you have the answer sheet, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, just, okay, never mind, never mind. So on the question paper, if you want to do your workings, you can just uh, use a pencil for the workings, just for the workings, guys. They're not marked. But you also don't want to mess up your paper because you have to return it. You don't take home with it. You you don't take it home with you. So just make sure you you do it respectfully. <laughs> you know, don't mess up your whole paper. And on top of that, if you do things like that, you know what's gonna happen? You won't be able to read it. So make sure you do it nicely, neatly. But with a pencil, you can do it. You know, don't be shy. Don't feel free to use your working space, guys. Otherwise, you'll find it difficult. Don't keep it in your mind. You'll forget numbers. Okay. Let's try to speed up. A trader made the following entries in his ledger. Irrecoverable is going up. Peter account going down. That means we have, uh, we've thought, we, we, we've considered some of the Peter's amount unreceivable. Like that's one way to put it. A credit customer has failed to pay within agreed time. No, it's not about time limit. It's about, we waited for you for years. You didn't pay, right? A debt which had been written off uh, has not been, it's not recovery as well because it's very increasing expenses. An amount owed by customer cannot be recovered. We tried and tried and tried. It's not coming back. The money's not coming. So forget it. We're going to write it off as irrecoverable. The trader has been unable to pay his supplier. It's not the payment. It's about receipt. We're talking about customer here. Okay? Never mind. Not the right answer. Let's move on. The balance in the books of Julie. On 1st July 2021, include the following. Trader receivables uh, at 30 June, end of the year because that's 2021 these are the receivables and these should be written off and the provision uh, for doubtful debts is maintained at two percent all right so what's happening here well 
first of all this is not our actual trade receivables this is before adjustment for the, the, the bad debt so get rid of that irrecoverable debt now we're left with 58,000 now that's our true receivable that's true receivable okay and you multiply that with 2% to get the provision it seems like the provision has gone down clearly because before the receivables were 64,200 and it was maintained at 2% and now it's 58 thousand times two percent is eleven sixty that's our new provision and the difference is one two eight four minus one one six zero it's one twenty four one twenty four decrees now you can see that When uh, valuing his closing inventory, Asim omitted goods costing 990. What is the effect of this error? Do you guys know how closing inventory and profit is connected? To make it short, I've explained this before so many times to my students and on the videos. Closing inventory, if it goes up, profit goes up. And the opposite is also true. If closing inventory has ignored 990 so your closing inventory is in this case down your profit is in this case down okay there is a wisdom behind it there is a reason behind it but for now let's just keep it short and move on okay your gross profit will be understated and your equity why will your equity be understated because gross profit will understate your net profit or less a profit for the year as well and that ends up in your equity section which is your capital and so you know both of them will be understated so on. the owner of a restaurant is connect concerned about high operating cost which statement will show the operating cost for the year bank statement not necessarily not necessarily okay uh, bank reconciliation statement no 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 not at all income statement for sure 100% is going to so show operating cost, 100%. Is SOFP? No, it looks at assets and liabilities. Ex these are expenses, essentially. So uh, some of the expenses are paid, some are not paid. <clears throat> okay. Income statement records it. All right. And income statement looks at the matching principle, isn't it? So even if it's paid or not paid. Look, if you look at the bank statement, you'll only get to know the operating costs which go through bank. There are other others you pay from cash as well. That's why the first one is wrong. Number 22. A service business provided the following information at the yeah, at the end of the year. What was the bank balance? It's a tricky one, but we'll deal with it, okay? So we're looking at uh, the, the accounting equation here. So we have some assets, some liabilities, and one of the assets is missing. And by the way, it could be an asset or a liability because we have a debit or a credit. Two possibilities it can be a positive balance or a negative balance. Let's have a look. So we have some assets, 16,000, more assets, 150, and the bank we don't know, X, we don't know that. Assets equal capital plus liabilities, isn't it? We didn't, we learned that, okay? Assets equal capital plus liabilities, right? How do we find X? We can add it up, we can move it on the other side, basic maths, isn't it? So that's 16,150 plus X equals, uh, that's going to be 14,900. And X clearly is a negative number. 14,900 minus 16,150. You will have to put it in my calculator. 14,900 minus 16,150. That's 1,250 negative. What does that tell you? Come on, can you tell me? What is that? That's a credit balance of 1,250. Let's move on. Number 23. How is interest on drawings recorded in the books of a partnership? Interest on drawings. Look, if you remember, the debit side of a partnership current account has only a few things. Interest on drawings, the drawings itself, and any uh, loss. So interest on drawing goes on the debit side of the current account. Really? It's that simple can't be no way well turns out it is 
really good, isn't it? It's one. Okay, let's move on. Uh, number 24. Well, my pen tablet is bothering me because my pen is out of battery and I have to use it with the wire. Anyway, Ajawi, then Yani were in, part, were in partnership sharing profits and losses equally. Equally important. The ratio. Residual profit after the appropriation is 47,000. Yani provided the following information. Okay, first of all, let's break this down. The profit share is going... Oh, that's a 2. That doesn't look like a 2, but that's a 2. Uh, let me change that. Okay. 47... 47... 47,000 minus... Not minus. Divided by 2. I need some water, I guess. 23,500. Need to hydrate. Don't forget, in the exam, you have to hydrate yourself. Okay? Not too much. Just take sips. Okay? Anyway, uh, that's a profit share, isn't it? Profit share okay so yani's current account balance at the start of the year is it was uh, 1500 credit you know what in current accounts credit means positive okay so that's a positive 1500 what is the current account balance at the end so we start with a positive 1500 let's see what are the additions and subtractions you may also make a t account if you feel comfortable make a t account okay and then put all the debits and credits you'll get the balancing figure uh, at the end of the year but I'm more comfortable with additions and subtractions, and I would like you to learn that method as well. This one's based on logic. So, credit balance, positive balance. When partner earns profit, it's going to increase the current account. Or essentially, we can say any credit entries will increase the current account. Any debit entries will decrease the current account, okay? So, uh, interest on capital is going to the partner. Partner is making that money, okay? 2400 Interest on drawings is debited in the current account, so we deduct it. It's a reduction in, in partner's interest in the business. Uh, salary will again increase partner's entitlement, and drawings will reduce that. Essentially, drawings are, are debited in the current account. All right, 1,500 plus 23,500 plus 2,400 minus 600 plus 3,000 minus 18,000. 11800 there's only one option i've noticed in this whole paper if you get the figure right you have the you have the mark okay okay let's move on a limited liability is uh, a limited liability company is formed who has the limited liability norm so easy it's not the directors whenever they ask you these questions about limited liability, uh, what's the, what are the benefits? You're, they're talking about from the owner's perspective. You know, sometimes they talk about owners moving from partnership to a company. What is the benefit? They get limited liability. So it's about the owners, right? Owner, who are the owners in a limited li in a limited company? They're the shareholders. Let's move on. It's a, it's a nice question. Save your time. Which statements are correct? Correct. <coughs> Sorry. Which statements are correct in relation to the financial statements of a limited company? Let's have a look. Ordinary dividends paid is shown in income statement never these are not expenses a transfer to general reserve is shown in the equity exchange in equity yes debenture issued are shown in the statement never equity means owner okay equity means owners so things that has to even this goes into equity because it's about changes to owners you know uh, belonging or let's just say owners investment any changes to that will affect We'll go into we'll go into changes in equity. So debenture debenture holders are not the owners; these are the lenders. So this goes under non-current liabilities. They have no no place, no place in SOCIE. No no place in statement change in equity. Proposed dividend is never shown anywhere. It's just notes. It's shown in the notes to financial statements. Anyway, uh, we. Oh wait, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not shown in this income statement. That's right. Two and four. Two and four. Two and four. Let's move on. That's true. Okay. Because they say it's not shown. Very good. Let's move on. I'm getting a call. I'm going to pause the recording for a second and I'm, I'll be back. Let me check if it's recording. Uh, yes. Okay. I took a call. I'm back now. Where are we? Fine. Okay. We figured that out. Proposed dividends are not shown. That is true. Okay. At first I thought 
this was not there, okay? So if they say proposed dividends are shown in the income statement, no, they're not. No, they're not. Let's move on. Number 27, a golf club sells refreshments to its members, suppliers of refreshments were 0250 on 1st January 2022 and 400 at the end of the year. Payments to suppliers during the year were 7200. That looks like a tricky question. Now let's move on. The inventory at the end of the year was 100 less than the inventory at the start of the year. Wow. Wow. I didn't, I, I didn't, this, this has to be one of the most challenging in this whole paper, uh, but it's easy when you understand, okay? There are two things involved. Number one, you need to know what are the purchases. And number two, then you have to put that in the, you know, opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory formula. So you get the cost of sales. Number one, how do you get the purchases amount? There's a logical way to do it. There's a T account way to do it. If you're feeling good with the, with the, uh, what do you call that? PLCA, your PLCA, purchase ledger control account, the opening balance, closing balance. If you're okay with that, make that, okay? But if you're not okay with that and you want to logically, numerically, let's have a look. So, look what happened. At the beginning, we owed 250. At the end, we owe 400. Even on top of paying 7200, we still owe 150 more, right? Or that just simply means this 250 was essentially paid out of the 7200. And on top of that, this is payable. So hopefully that makes sense. Our payables went up during the year by 150. We can just simply add 150. Or we can just make a T account, guys. Our trade payables during the year went up by 150, even on top of paying 7,200. It must mean, it must mean we have, we must have purchased worth of that much. We must have purchased worth of 150 on top of paying 7,200. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Okay. Or again, make a T account. This is our purchases figure: 7,350. We are running out of time. Otherwise, I would have explained you multiple ways. The inventory at the end of the year was 100 less than the inventory at the uh, start of the year. So opening inventory and closing inventory. Now what they're saying, they're saying the closing inventory is lesser. Closing inventory is lesser. How do you find cost of sales? You do opening inventory plus purchases, which we know in this case is 7350 minus closing inventory. Again. They're saying closing inventory is lesser. Now, you see, opening whatever opening inventory is, whatever it is, it's going to be added to the purchases and closing will be subtracted. What it tells us is, guys, the one that's added is 100 greater than the one that's deducted. So if at the end it is, or let's say, wait a minute, sorry, is less, exactly. So if the closing inventory is zero, opening has to be 100. Whatever closing is, opening is 100 more. So no matter which values you put in, just make sure your opening is, you put that as 100 more. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, guys, think about that for a second. Overall, our cost of sales is going to be 7450. This is a tricky one. Okay, go through it once again, if you like. A social club provided the following information. What was this? What was the amount of subscriptions in the income and expenditure account for the year and the 31st December? Again, you go with three accounts, make them. You know how T-Account works? Make them. Very good. Otherwise, you can also think about it logically. Uh, so, at the beginning of the year, this was already paid for the current year. And that's for, for the next year. So, this is for the current year. And that's for the next year. Because it's prepaid at the end of the year. It means it's for the next one. And this was prepaid at the end of the previous year. It means it's for the current year. Think about it, please. And then, this is what we received during the year. So, what goes into income and expenditure account based on matching principle? What belongs to this year? Well, it has to be 660 plus what was paid before and minus what is paid for the future. That's for the next year. That's not for this year. It's for the next year. Remove it. The overall effect is 650, isn't it? Uh, easy to figure that one out. Let's move on. Number 29, the manufacturing business provide the following information. What was the total of uh, the direct cost? Let's have a look. Supervisor is always indirect, not directly working on the goods. Heat and light is also indirect. Again, not cannot be associated with every piece coming out. Depreciation is also indirect. You should know this knowledge, okay? Um, operator's wage always it's a direct. Well, not gonna use the extreme word always, but in most cases it has to be um, 
direct unless otherwise indicated. Raw material is consumed is also direct. It's direct material. That's it. 29 plus 82. 29 plus 82. Triple one. Let's move on. Where, where, in, where is work in progress shown in the SOFP of a mini manufacturing business? Work in progress, guys. Remember, in a in a manufacturing business, three types of inventories: fixed, uh, sorry, finished goods, work in progress, and raw materials. It's one of the types of inventories that we have in manufacturing. Account. Let's move on. How is profit calculated from incomplete records? Remember, the, there's a formula. I uh, can just call it whatever you want, whatever formula. It's magic formula, right? Uh, which goes like that: you have opening capital. Okay. What increases your capital? Maybe you can say profit. Maybe capital introduced. Okay. If it's a loss, then it reduces. Drawings will reduce it. So there are these factors that affect your opening capital. In this case, it's only closing capital, opening capital, drawings, and the profit that's concerned. So we're gonna you know narrow it down to that much. Equals closing inventory. Oh no, no, no. Capital. Okay. Opening capital, profit will increase it, drawings will reduce it, you will get the closing capital. And so the focus, or let's say the subject of formula, let's make it the profit and move everything on the other side. If profit is over there, well, you're closing uh, capital plus drawings minus opening capital should give you the answer. And let's see where, where, where it happens like that. Closing capital, not plus opening capital, wrong, minus, closing cap, uh, minus opening capital and add the drawings. That's good. Should be wrong. You can look at it. Uh, let's move on. A, a company provided the following list of balances at 30, 30 September 2022. What was the current ratio? We'll look at all the current assets or, and put them over current liabilities. What are the current assets? Let's have a look. So um, for the current assets, 150. I'm going to put ticks for the current asset. Or let's just say C. And uh, this one's payable in, in a few months. That's a current liability. That's a non-current liability, not included, no need. Uh, bank overdraft is a current liability. That's a current asset. That's a current asset. That's a current asset. That's a current liability. That's a current liability. What are we going to do? Put it as a fraction. Uh, put, put your fraction sign first in your calculator. Put that fraction thing. And now put on the top, you put 150 plus... Uh, 8,000 plus 275 plus 24,000. That's it. That's it. At the bottom, you put 2,000 plus, well, no, 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 not 400. Uh, six and then 95. 6,000 and then 95. Wait a minute. 2,000 and then uh, 400 before forgetting that okay we're forgetting that 400 because I got an answer which uh, uh, didn't make much sense three point it gives me three point eight one six nine five why am I doing this we don't need that okay this is enough three point eight two let's move on 33 Alan provided the following information about his business what was the value of his current assets a little bit tricky, but you'll get the idea. Now, uh, what is part of the liquid asset? It's your current assets without inventory, excluding, we can say excluding in inventory, over the current liabilities equals 2.5, which is your liquid test ratio. So your current assets excluding inventory. Please understand the writing, okay? I'm not good with writing anymore. It's the, uh, you know, the, the, the days of typing, you know, and unfortunately, I'm not even that good with typing. What's wrong with me? Uh, no, but believe me, you know, on, on a piece of paper, I can write better. It's just that, you know, the, the board is kind of in, in a very uncomfortable position at the moment. Times uh, 12,000, 30,000. That's our current asset excluding inventory. If we put the inventory along with it, it's going to be 36,000. Don't be, don't be tricked. Okay, we're talking about total current assets. Inventory is a current asset, but it's not part of the liquid asset formula. So when we fix, when we solve that formula, we are not talking about inventory there. So we have to put inventory in, back in. Okay, let's move on. A trader wants to improve her gross margin. 
Okay, reduced administrative expenses have nothing to do with gross margin. They go after the gross profit, so nothing to do with it. Depreciation is an expense after gross profit, so has no effect on gross margin. Uh, rate of cash discount again after, again after that goes after gross. It's it's either an expense or an income, so it's, it has nothing to do with gross gross profit. The only option remaining, you know. Let's move on. By cancellation, we got the answer. You can also think of it as you know, if you reduce the rate of trade discount allowed, means you're selling at a higher price. Sales price will increase. Gross margin will increase. Let's move on. 35 to further to finance further expansion a business owner paid 10,000 into business bank account in the ledger a debit entry was made in the bank account and a credit entry was was made in the capital account looking good no problem with that oh they're they're talking about principles there which accounting principle were being applied we are clearly talking about the owner investing and as they're, they're treated separate from the business isn't it so it has to be business entity. Are we talking about matching there? I don't see anything about matching really. You can, you can look into it and can, you won't find anything to do with matching. You will clearly find something to do with owner, you know, in putting into business as if they're different. And they are different accounting wise. What else are they talking about? Well, if I, if I had to, you know, look at the better option, isn't it duality? Like that's an easy one. They're very clearly hinting you, like look at uh, giving you a hint. Owner, debit entry, credit entries. It's it's, it's screaming, it's screaming option B, right? You don't have to use your own uh, brain, really. It's all given to you. It's an easy exam. What are you gonna score in your exams? Go ahead, score your A star, guys. All right, get your A star. But those unprepared, it's a bit late because you just have the MCQ. But those who are watching in the future. Wish you all the best, guys. Accounting is one of the easiest ASRs you can get. No doubt. Okay, good luck. Take care. Bye.